Panasonic MZ800 48 inch OLED. My first Panasonic. Check the description below of timestamps of events, including dimensions. Top of that box there, bit of the pedestal neck, power lead instruction book, quick setup guide, and some reactive foam. Part of the pedestal neck, mains lead, instruction book and remotes, quick setup guide, bit of foam there, I'm not sure if it's protection for when we're building it up. Have the box there, so I'm guessing that's got the pedestal base inside. A bit of polystyrene packaging. More poly. And somewhere good to grab it. My god, that didn't come out easily. That is the TV from the front, side and the back. Included remote control and accessories pack. So some bolts there with a bit of thread lock on and get into the pedestal stand. Treble A batteries for the remote control, one times remote control and a bit of paperwork and dump construction book or whatever. Quick close up of the remote control. Power on off button at the top, channel numbers. We've got subtitles button, volume up and down, channels up and down, mute button, voice command button there, and it is Google TV, so we've got the Google microphone symbol. Home button, guide button, info button, cursor arrows left, right, up, down, and enter. Back button, exit to get all the way out got quick access Netflix YouTube freeview play and Google Play menu button source or input button colored buttons there for different apps and media playback and we've got play pause fast forward rewind stop and record also text button there okay flip the remote over and pop the back off treble A batteries into the back and then it gives you a screw to secure that remote on but does anyone put those on? I don't think so. So if you screw that on, your batteries go flat, you spend half an hour frustrated looking around for a small screwdriver, but anyway, that's the remote. Also that pack of bolts there, some with that blue thread lock on as well for the pedestal. We've got a figure eight mains lead there. Straight connection to the TV, UK plug. Got two bits of foam here, and I think they're just padding you put under the TV if you have to stand it up without it stand on, maybe while you're wall mounting or doing whatever. So I'll keep hold of those. This is the pedestal neck, cast bit of aluminium there. The black sort of hammerite finish, pretty cool. You can see we've got the threaded portion there, so four threaded holes to attach to the base and also the through holes there for the bolts to go in and attach it to the TV. That is a extremely heavy metal pedestal base. A bit of plastic there to keep it protected. May as well peel it off now. Yeah, it's nice. And it's heavy that is. Got to be at least four mil, so it's got Maybe plastic or alley sort of wrap on it and then steel underneath and we can see there where our bolts go through to attach it to the neck pretty cool on the bottom of the neck there's two sort of pins facing out there to locate here and here so pop that in tip it forwards I'll just quickly wind these bolts in Well, I 
TV is now laid on a large flat surface, beginning the screen. I'm just using the box in the polythene bag as usual. Threaded holes in there. Little bit there for locating, so my tab can just slot under there and down. And then four screws just to drop into these holes. Quickly wind those in. Now I've got the stand assembled on the TV. The way I usually stand it up when I'm on my own is to pick up the screen from this end, carefully place my hands underneath with even pressure and just tip it backwards onto its stand and up. Now I'm going to zoom in on the connections on the side and the back. CI card slot reader, terrestrial aerial, HDMI 1, HDMI 2 is enhanced audio return channel. So connect an HDMI cable to your sound system or sound device and it will control that, feed the audio back and do the volume on it automatically. Two USBs there, rated at half an amp each. Then looking at the back, that's the third HDMI, so three HDMIs in total. Headphone or analog audio output, so that could actually be an advantage to some people if you've got an old sound system. Preset or satellite input, wired internet, LAN connection, and SP diff digital optical audio out. On to the dimensions, 48 inch model. First thing to notice, nice central pedestal base. So the width for that is 44 centimeters or 17 and 3 eighths of an inch. Depth 22 centimeters or 8 and 3 quarters of an inch. From whatever it stood on, to the bottom of the TV, three centimetres or just under one and a half inches. To the top of the TV, 65 and three quarter centimetres or 25 and seven eighths of an inch. Looking at the TV from the back, from the bottom of the TV to the centre of that first visa mount hole, 227 millimetres. So bottom of the TV to the center of that piece mount hole, 227 millimeters. It's a 200 mil by 200 mil square visa and I've just whipped one of the bolts out so we can see which sort of bolts we need. And it comes with M6 10 mil bolts already in there. I would probably do M6 15 mil bolts once you've got your wall mount, bracket and a washer on and there's a few mil in until you hit that thread. So I'd say 15 mil M6 bolts. Now I've got it connected to wired internet mains and aerial, so I'm going to peel off the screen protector. Oh, nice. Plastic everywhere. It says to press those buttons on the remote to initiate pairing mode, so hold down the source button. Remote's flashing. similar to adding the Sony remote but I guess they're both Android TV. Connected using Ethernet so that's my network. It does also have Wi-Fi built in. So make the most of your TV. I probably will do this because I'm actually going to take this TV home and use it. Uh, but I'm going to skip for now just for the demo. Accept. A few more. Okay. 
So location, not bothered about sending statistics back, but location's fine. And again, I will sign in later, but for now I'm just going to skip. So I'll set up assistant later. Actually, I will do it, bear with me. I'll pop back when it's done. I've now signed into my Gmail or Google account because I thought may as well you can use the voice search. Also install additional apps from their store, which I don't really definitely don't want TikTok. Uh, I can have Disney, that's fine. I'm not bothered about the other things either. TV, yeah. Cast you TV. So turns and conditions, fine. Might try store just to see if we've got a store demo in there. And then I'll put it back to home later. Not bothered about Chromecast activating it and wake up, waking up the TV. So my tuning method or my channel method is going to be aerial and digital. So I'll come back in five minutes when this is completed. Okay, tuning has finished. We're now on to region select. So it's where your aerial is pointing. Mine's pointing at Yorkshire. Not on about, well, I'm not bothered about diagnostics being sent back myself, but that's your choice. Okay, I don't know if we've got an inbuilt demo. I'm not really familiar with these Panasonic Android TV, so I'll have a quick look, and if I've got one, great. If not, I'll revert it back to home Can't mode. Can't find an inbuilt demo on this TV, so I'm going to put it back to home mode. Out of there and out again. Okay, just going to check the pitch settings, we're on standard, Dolby Vision, energy saving, off, so I don't want the picture dimmed down to save power. I'll leave everything else as standard, make sure colour temperature is on standard as well. Dolby noise reduction I'm turning off altogether. That's trying to clean up the picture and make it better, but it does affect movement. That off as well. Looks vivid. Okay, so on to live TV. Also, workers in the surgical industry tell us helped save the industry from its parlous state over the past 12 months. So, clearly, a balancing act. We think that these measures will help bring down net migration, but it was due to come down, if you believe the forecast, to these sorts of numbers over four or five years. It may happen more quickly now, perhaps not as quickly as to be visible ahead of the next election. But the big picture here is people are waiting for whether or not British workers uh, can be trained up, uh, the inactive workers will come into the labour market and do these sorts of jobs. That's been government policy for a decade and a half. Good luck. Okay, Faisal, thank you very much. Faisal Islam now. And most importantly, which is part of the government strategy. Quick look at the guide as well. You can see we're on BBC News and Weather there, 101. Down one, you can curse it down individually one by one, come on Earth, new I'm a celebrity. Or you can press the channel button down and up to page through, page by page. So if you want something there with a little triangle symbol, that's free view play. Click on that, it'll load it up on demand through your internet. So providing you've got internet, 
I can go back to this morning and watch Homes Under the Hammer or something like that. Or, hey, there we go, Homes Under the Hammer. So if I wanted that, it was on, say, 12 o'clock, press OK, it will load it up through the BBC iPlayer. Or go to this morning, if I want to watch that, press OK, it will load it up through ITV. So you can just browse that guide, see what was on that you may want to watch and watch it as you want to watch it, so that's pretty cool. Let's press exit. Onto the PS5, just having a look. Pitch settings I've got set individually for each HDMI. This one's set to game mode for the PS5. So I can alter them settings and only affect the PlayStation. Although well, I haven't really changed anything yet. One thing I did check though on advanced settings, they should be off actually. But they should be nullified because if I look further down, you've got game mode there which is greyed out but it's defaulted to one so that should cut out your input lag you can also put PC mode on when, which if you're using a PC fair enough same thing though I imagine it will cut all the lag out so game mode cuts down your input lag so you'll see reactions to the buttons you press quicker I'll just do a quick demo we'll have a look at what it looks like in North London I'm Derek Ray and I'm joined for expert analysis by Stuart Robson I'm very much looking forward to... Well, it could be on for him here. And a goal! They start as they need to continue. They make the opening statement. Well, here we can see it again. Look at the way he glides past the defender to create space for himself. And it's a great finish. He holds off the defender, keeps his composure, and finds the back of the net. It's a marvellous goal. Okay, quick look at Horizon Forbidden West. terraforming system that's spiraling out of control. And only I can fix it. Only I have your genetic code. It won't be long before we hit the point of no return. And then, extinction. I've been searching for months for what I need. A backup of Gaia. The AI you designed to control the system. don't look like the ones in the sacred lands. The focus helps you see the ones we need. Back on the home menu, we've got the click to speak, or we can hold that microphone button down. I can say the TV Dan, and there we go. And I can click on one of my old videos or whatever. So, searches nicely there, just saves you using the remote to navigate so much and pressing so many buttons. Or live TV. Ugh. TV exit exit there we go got there in the end anyway 
So we can search across the top or we can be on the home screen, discover, or we can get more apps there. So there's more apps, sign into your Google account. You can pick and download whatever you want from there. Also go to the inputs, what's connected and settings. So in the settings, got the network settings there, channel settings. So if we want to retune, you can go in there to retune your channels, auto tune in all that business and auto channel update is on. Some people don't like that. I don't want the message to tell me there's new channels all the time. I'll go and look myself occasionally or I'll find out in all the ways. My accounts, apps. So what I've got there, what I've used. Back out of there. Device preferences. So we can go there. We can go to the about and see the software. TV lifetime, date and time, timers. Imports power settings, so sleep timer is off, picture off is there. So I suppose if you're listening to Spotify for your TV, you can turn the picture off. Auto sleep in a store, I'd have it totally turned off. At home, I might have it set to four hours. On my LG, I've got it set to two because of the kids leaving it on. Picture settings all there, I've got it on standard. Although I've taken off some of the digital noise reduction. Uh, sound settings, sound is actually quite good on this, I was quite impressed, but then you have got that thicker back there, that's the point, I forgot the thickness, storage, home screen, store mode, Google Assistant, Chromecast built in, so Chromecast there, energy saver, turn off display after 24 hours, location, usage and diagnostics, so then we go back, back and back to the home. Okay, so quick look at the home screen. Now we've got our favorite apps, Netflix, Prime, iPlayer, ITV, All4, My5, YouTube, Google Play, Movies and TV, Live TV, Multimedia Player, so USB stick in and whatever, and you play videos, pictures, do slideshows, you can add more to there. Obviously go to the App Store, you can download Disney Plus, all that business. What's on Freeview Play now and what channels are on? Highlights from Netflix, YouTube recommended, iPlayer, ITV, all four, my five, Freeview Play. So it's giving you a summary of different sources here and stuff on UK TV Play is not a bad app for free. Stuff from Drama Yesterday and some of those channels. STV Player, Horror Bites, or you can customise that home screen. So all in all, this TV at the minute, 48 inch version, it's about 899. So I think it's about on par maybe with the B3 OLED panel wise. So it seems to undercut that a bit, I think, at the moment. Uh, I'm actually going to keep this TV and take it home. So I'll be using it in my dining room as a sort of PC monitor and TV. So I'll see how it fares as a monitor because it might get abused a bit by me, but it should be good. So I'm quite impressed with it. Nice bright picture, looks really good on 4K stuff. Really good motion, sounds good as well. I think the only thing this doesn't do, say my G2 OLED will do 4K 120, this is 4K at 60. But at the moment, I've never done 4K in 120, even though I've got PS5, everything I seem to play is just 4K at 60 frames at best. Um, SD wasn't the greatest, but I don't watch anything in SD, so I don't know how that affects other people, but 899, pretty good price. And that is it for now. Tschüss.